In this video, we will learn about administration of IM injections. Before you proceed, you want to make sure you have physician's orders and you are exercising 10 rights of medication. Afterwards, you need to do three checks for safe medication administration. Let's learn about those checks. Check number one, when you read the MAR and remove the medication from the drawer and verify the patient's name, MRN number. Check number two, while preparing the medication and confirming medication label matches the MAR. Check number three, recheck the label on the container with the MAR again at the patient's bedside. You can give the patient an opportunity to ask any question the patient may have related to the procedure. Now the nurse will select an appropriate site for the injection. For example, vastus lateralis, deltoid muscle and ventrogluteal can be the choices for IM injection. At the same time, you're also palpating the patient's muscle mass and assessing the site for any tenderness, redness, inflammation or bruising. Help the patient find a comfortable position that will accommodate the injection site. Now apply clean gloves after hand hygiene and use anatomical landmarks to find the site again for ventrogluteal injection. Place the heel of your hand over the greater trochanter of the patient's hip. With the wrist almost perpendicular to the femur point, the thumb towards the patient's groin, point the index finger to the anterior superior iliac spine and extend the middle finger back along the iliac crest towards the buttock. The index finger, the middle finger and the iliac crest forms a V-shaped triangle. This is the injection site located for ventrogluteal injection. Once you have located the site, it may help to mark the site with an unopened alcohol wipe to clean the injection site. You have to go in zigzag manner for 30 seconds. Once the area is dry, remove the needle cap, hold the syringe with the thumb and forefinger of your dominant hand as if it were a dart. Remind your patient to try and relax. Place the ulnar side of your non-dominant hand just below the injection site and pull the patient's skin laterally about one to one and a half inches. Hold this position until you have inserted the needle if the patient has little muscle mass. Grasp the body of the muscle between your thumb and forefinger with your dominant hand and quickly pierce the muscle at a 90 degree angle to the skin. Continue pull the skin taut with your non-dominant hand. Stabilize the syringe by grasping the lower end of the barrel with the fingers of the non-dominant hand. Once you're satisfied with the placement, now you're ready to proceed the injection medication slowly at the rate of one milliliters every 10 seconds. Wait for 10 seconds and then smoothly withdraw the needle, engage the needle safety release and the skin and place a gauze pad over the site. Apply gentle pressure. Make sure you don't massage the area Apply the bandage to the puncture site if necessary. And also make sure you do the follow-up examination and check if your patient is doing okay. Discard the used supplies and then wash your hands and perform documentation. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and follow us for more clinical videos. Hello nurses and nursing students. I hope you guys enjoyed learning the skill of intramuscular injection. Now it's time to practice some questions associated with that skill. Here is the first question on your screen. When giving an intramuscular injection to a five years old client, which priority action should the nurse take? Here are your four options. I want you to think for yourself, take a pause and think which one is the right answer before I discuss. All right, so option number eight, distract the child with a toy or candy. What do you guys think? It seems tempting, but that is actually incorrect. Though distraction is recommended, this would not be a priority at this point of time. Option number B, use the ventrogluteal site only. That is incorrect because you know in kids, sometimes we have to use the deltoid muscle, which is the preferred site. Option number C, allow the child to choose between standing or laying down position. What do you guys think about it? That is also incorrect, though it's good to let the child have a choice, but the standing position would not be recommended. Option number D, ask for assistance from a parent or another nurse. What do you guys think? 
and that is the correct option. The child will have to be in a secure position for the injection and another person will have to assist you and it's and it's great if the parents or the other nurse can assist you in this. So this means the correct option in this one is option number D. Okay, so here is the next question on your screen. The nurse is working in a travel clinic and needs to prepare to administer the hepatitis B vaccine to a client. By which route should the nurse administer the vaccine to the client? Here are your four options. Think for yourself and choose which one is the answer before I discuss. All right, guys, option number A, oral route. So that is incorrect because most vaccines should be given intramuscular to optimize the immunogenicity of that vaccine and minimize the reaction. Hepatitis B vaccine is given intramuscular, not oral. So I already told you guys the answer, but let's just still discuss. Option number B says rectal. Option number B is incorrect because most vaccines you guys know should be given intramuscular to optimize the immunogenicity of the vaccine and minimize the reaction. Hepatitis B vaccine is given intramuscular and administration via the rectal route of the vaccine is uncommon. Option number C, subcutaneous. And that is also incorrect because you guys already know that hepatitis B vaccine is given intramuscular, not subcutaneously. And option number D, intramuscular. And yes, that is absolutely correct because most of the vaccines should be given intramuscular. And that is the correct option. I'm pretty sure you guys are excited about the next question. I am. Here is the next question on your screen. Why should the nurse perform the Z tracking procedure when administering an intramuscular injection of iron dextran? Here are your four options and think for yourself which one is the right answer. All right, guys, now let's just look at option number A to ensure the medication is not injected into a vessel. What do you guys think? That is incorrect because regular procedure guidelines are created to prevent injections into the blood flow, such as landmarking. Option number B, to ensure the medication is absorbed quicker. And that is incorrect. Z tracking is not done to increase the absorption of medication. Option number C, to help to minimize any pain at the injection site. What do you guys think? No, that is also incorrect. Z tracking is not going to decrease or increase the pain at the injection site. All right, guys, now let's just look at option number D and that is correct. The Z tracking technique actually creates a seal to prevent the medication from leaking out of the injection site. And that's why we perform Z tracking in IM injections. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed learning clinical skill as well as NCLEX style question practice. That's what we do at FPNPC. We are always here to support the students and make sure you contact us if you have more queries. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, share it with your friends. Thank you very much.